different location for today's reading. I'm afraid that with the bank holiday, it completely threw me. Um, so we're at, what, three o'clock? And I'm realising, oh, you definitely need to do that. Uh, so we're going to hear from my, my, uh, Luke, not Mark. We're not in Mark's Gospel Boring Links. Uh, we're going to hear Luke chapter 21. I'm going to reflect on it. And I'm hoping that there's not going to be too many interruptions. So here we go. Here's Luke chapter 21 from the NIV version. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, As for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on one another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am here, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, don't be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison. And you will be brought before kings and governors all on account of my name. And so you'll bear testimony to me. But make up your mind now not to worry beforehand about how you'll defend yourself. But I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed by parents, brothers, sisters, friends, relatives, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me but not a hair on your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that, it is desolate, that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the city get out and let those who are in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive is about, about what is about to become of the world. The heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all of the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you that this generation certainly will not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful of your hearts, or else they will be weighed down with corrosing drunkenness and the anxieties of life, and the day will close on you suddenly like a trap. 
for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and in the evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives and all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Well, that wasn't certainly was not light reading. End times, doom, gloom. It's hard, really. Um, I, you feel like Jesus has this deep foreboding. And I know I've mentioned it an awful lot of times, but um, when the destruction of the temple does occur, which is not long after Jesus has died, when, when Jerusalem is sacked, it's horrible. You know, it's really, it's not, if you read the uh, accounts and like Josephus and things, it's, it's not, it's not a pleasant, it's not a pleasant thing. And there is a sense where I'm not saying that Jesus isn't speaking um, eschatologically in the future, not, not talking about the end times and, uh, but there's also a very imminence of what he's saying, that he's looking at his people and he knows that if they continue resisting the way that they have, and remember that throughout the, the, the Gospels, you know when they're gathering in numbers, like feeding of the 5,000 of those, when they're gathering in numbers, there is potentially this subtext of military action that they want Jesus to overthrow the Romans because that's what they're looking for. Barabbas, who gets let off, uh, later um, in Jesus' place, um, he he's he causes uprising. He's militant. He's not, uh, you know, not really a, a good guy. But he'll be a freedom fighter, ostensibly. But uh, yeah, Jesus is looking at what the Jews and how they're responding to the Romans and thinking, "Oh, guys, this is going to end so badly. This is going to end so badly." And any of you that are listening to me, run, run. So, you know, I'm not discounting the eschatological uh, ramifications of the end times that Jesus is not talking about those as well. But I like to think about the imminency of what Jesus is saying about how he has such huge amounts of compassion for the people right there. You know, um, when Jesus heals, yeah, I mean, of course, that we read it and we're sort of seeing um, the implications for our times and what that means theologically and biblically, you know, hermeneutically. But equally, this is a man who just sees people's need and has to meet it, sees the potential catastrophe that lies ahead and he's desolate about what's happening. We need to have that same soft heartedness and that's not easy in this world. It's not easy to care what's going to happen if you see something potentially that's going to be catastrophic or, you know, it is so much easier to stop caring. You know, when we see wars in Syria, when we see, you know, millions and millions of people displaced without a home, children, you know, oh. It's so easy to just go, let's switch off. But Jesus didn't. Um, so what do you think? I don't know. That was quite a long waffle for me. Uh, I must be feeling, must be feeling it today. Let me know what you think anyway. So let's, um, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, in trying times when the problems in the world seem too much for anyone uh, to understand or to deal with. Help us to continue to care, to have hearts that are open to feeling the sadness for those who are in need. Help us to continue listening, even if we feel like there's nothing that we can do to help. Or that there's nothing anyone can do to help, that there's no hope in the situation. Lord God, even in those times, may we feel it and lift it before you in prayer. 
I pray that you would strengthen all of us so that in all our struggles that uh, you would give us the faithfulness to continue to pray, to hope, to believe that a God who loves us will not forsake us or abandon us. And that though times may look increasingly troubling, uh, there is always hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen.